Mm. Coffee. Coffee's good, but you really have to know what you're doing when you make it. Gatorade's really good. I've been under the weather for a few days. Since that last uh, video, I started getting sick. My wife's a teacher, and so she she picks up all the little bugs that the children drop nowadays. And brought one home to me, but I've still been suffering from this, uh, you know, the pneumonia thing. I had several of the, two of the Z-Packs they gave me, and... Uh, I also had a shot and uh, other antibiotics and still sick. <clears throat> you know, when I was younger, I used to work in the construction field. And um, I may have been exposed to asbestos because the tiles that I put in schools when I was in my 20s. You know, I, I didn't work there for a long time, but I had to cut those tiles, you know, and they didn't tell you anything about that stuff oh yeah by the way there's a asbestos try not to breathe it that was the that was the equivalent of their safety training uh what i want to talk to you guys about is something very important and i know a lot of you may be reeling from the donald trump winning and i want to remind you of the dream that i have and i am standing by that dream and if you've been watching the news and the pundits and how they say, huh, who would have ever thunk it that Donald Trump would be the winner? You know, the Lord showed me that he would be the nominee. He showed me the number five. In this dream, I, what I saw was, I saw a blue curtain, presidential blue curtain. I saw two U.S. flags and they were folded like a fan. Like they used to do back in the old days. You know, you'd see these movies from... It's supposedly uh, depicting the 1800s or something. They would have these fan-shaped <coughs> uh, American flags. And I saw Trump is the nominee, I believe is what it said, in white letters, came out of the blue, and then it said number five. And then I saw everybody was against him, the Republicans, the Democrats, they were all hating on him. And even the news media, everybody didn't want him to win it was like a war on Donald Trump which and so then after I saw that I saw like <laughs> I didn't describe this because I couldn't understand it and I talked about it I don't understand what I see because the Bible tells us that we prophesy in part and these things that God gives us are in part because you see there is something going on there is a war there's a war between Almighty God and the fallen one, Lucifer. The one of the most powerful angels that ever was created is trying to destroy God's kingdom and take the physical universe from God and usurp God's throne. And he's been involved in doing this from the very beginning. One third of God's angels fell according to the Bible. Listen to me what, what I'm telling you. Now, uh, in this dream, at the end of it, I saw them selling Donald Trump's memorabilia. Okay? And uh, I saw one pink streamer hanging down like it had been on a balloon or something. I'm not sure, but the point of the selling the memorabilia, it seemed that there was sadness. And so I was thinking, because God didn't tell me, and I told people, I don't know what it means. God didn't tell me if he won. And there's another guy named Perry Stone who always gets from the Lord the word of who will win, and he didn't get anything either. But here's the thing, you know, I saw that and I thought, well, maybe they kill, Donald gets killed or something happens. And I'm going to tell you guys something that may shock some of you. I still believe this is what's going to happen. Something is going to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president, I believe. Look, they cannot allow him to go in there and undo all of the New World Order stuff that Obama just completed for them. You see, and I was watching, I was watching the 
the elections up late and I thought oh, Donald's Hillary is going to win like the Branham prophecy and stuff, you know, but here's how Hillary did win the popular vote. She, she beat Donald, but here's the thing. Suppose something would have, would, would happen. Like say there's a, an attack against the United States and Trump and Pence both are taken out. And then our great leader, Obama says, you know, Hillary really did win. And, and since she really did win the popular vote and there's riots going on and people are so upset about her not winning, you know, this is the same thing that happened with Al Gore. He won the popular vote, but he lost the other one. And so we're going to make her president elect for now because Obama's got to go run the UN or whatever it is, however it goes down. Right. But it's a it could be a beautiful scenario for that, and and brother Brian and I have been talking for days about this. You know, the thing is, there are some people that are on that are on YouTube. There's a guy named Kim Clement, and he said Donald Trump will become president. I don't think he said it before I said it about him being the nominee. I said it when nobody was saying that, and uh, maybe he did beat me. But here's the thing. God Almighty controls everything, doesn't he? He even knows when Cyrus is going to be born and he's going to name him. I'll name him. I'm going to call out his name before he's ever born and he will rebuild Jerusalem and all this. Okay, now, there's another dude, Nebuchadnezzar. God set him up. And the Bible tells us all about these things and to really go into them would take hours. The other day, the Lord spoke something to me, and so I'm going to, I didn't release it then, but I'm going to do it today. I'm going to tell you guys what God told me. And again, I don't know how these things work out, you know, because here's the thing. There's a war going on for souls, for eternity. I mean... Eternity is a long time, you know, and how can we not have compassion on those who will spend eternity separated from God Almighty with no way ever to redeem themselves? No way ever to make it back to the sheepfold. What a horrible thought. Have you thought of that? The eternal destiny of these people. So... With that being said, there are many people, there are a few people that said, oh yeah, I prophesied that Donald Trump would be president. You know, this is what the Lord told me. Matthew 7 and 22. Many will come to me on that day. Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. And Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, will say to them, Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Now how did they prophesy? Because he didn't say, hey, you prophesied wrong. You didn't cast out any demons. Nope, he, they did. You know, there's a scripture in there where God talks about this. He wants to get the king to come out. Ahab, I think it was. He wanted him to come out, right? Because he's wicked. He's a wicked king. How can I get him to come out? And the uh, angel says, I know how to do it. And God says, well, how, how are you going to do it? And he says, uh, I'll, be a lying, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets and they'll cause him to come out and be killed in battle. I'll tell you something, you see, there's a lot of people that want to prophesy in the name of God Almighty. And, uh, you know, a lot of times they get it right. And uh, there's a lot of people like that lady that, that speaks to the dead and all that. How does she do that? How does she know all these things, huh? You don't, 
the devil has his servants too. You see, God said that there would be tares sown in the field. And then the workers came and said, oh, Lord, look, overnight the rain came and the tares popped up in the field. Can, should we take them out? No. Nope. You might pull out some wheat with that. Don't do it. So, just like God told me about Saeed. Just like God told me about a trysting that was going on. Somebody was speaking about a trysting, which is an illicit affair. Some great prophet was saying that she was trysting with the Lord. You don't think he knows about this? <laughs> God's displeased. And like I said before, destruction's coming. You see, the Lord told me in Jeremiah 6 and verse 6 in verse 17, he says, Also I set a watchman over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. You see, Donald Trump is a trumpet sounding. He's pointing out to the world that there is corruption everywhere. Pastor Patrick had a dream about this, and he saw a knight in shining armor. And uh, he had a red, a red feather in his hat, I think, on his helmet. And he was pointing out, do you hear that? You know, there are people that do hear from God. Near to Christ. He's got his mission over there in the Philippines. And how many people are helping Pastor Patrick out when he's saving little kids' lives. He saw it, you see. A man, he said, would come along and he would point out the corruption. And that's what God's doing. You see, Donald Trump was nominated by God, not by man. And everybody thinks, well, now everything's all cool, man. It's all over with because now Donald's going to put the world back right. Nope. You see, there's a clock that started when Israel became a nation again. And that generation shall not pass away until all things are fulfilled. Do you think, look at the popular vote of this country for Hillary Clinton. A known, a known, absolute, 100% undeniable liar. A thief. On her own taxes, she says, I, we spent 90% of this money that comes in back out there. And that's a lie. And they could show on the taxes only 6%. Okay? For her foundation. Those people are corrupt. They are part of the Illuminati. They are part of the scam. They are part of the wool that is pulled over your eyes in the matrix. And you see these kids right now rioting, these college kids and all that, because they've lost their way. The church has failed them in some way. Because the thing is, we, as a church body, did not stand up against unrighteousness. There's abortion on demand. They're doing all this nasty stuff, teaching kids how to have sex and how to use condoms and all this junk that's in the world. Homosexuality is now the norm. There are men turning into into women now. And then there's, got, and then there's bathrooms that are neither male nor female. And you can go into the woman's locker room if you think you're a girl and take a shower with those girls. The Bible tells us that in the last days that the very things that were called good will be spoken evil of. That that the things that were once righteousness will be turned into dirt in their eyes. You see, because the hearts of men are evil. The Bible tells us that the very thoughts and intents of the man is evil, you see. And we're all one of them. And we're saved by the grace of God, you see. People think there's a saying that says, uh, there go I, but for the grace of God. Well, you know, that's not even in the Bible. A man coined that using... Bible scripture and he put it together as his own saying. It's not even in the Bible. I don't know if I can get this message through to you and I don't know who it's really for. Maybe it's for the end times or something. <laughs> but I'm telling you, destruction is coming upon this country. And I don't think that Donald Trump will be able to make it into office. 
Now, I'm not saying God's telling me this, but I'm telling you, something's going down because God spoke it to me. God told me this. He said, while the people are saying peace and security, destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. That's First Thessalonians 5 and 3. You see, God Almighty does not want a bunch of deathbed repentance. He wants people that loves Him. They must love Him with all of their heart, soul, and mind. The body, tell, the, 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 body the work of Christ, okay, tells us that there, there's a scripture that says that this testing is coming upon you to let God know what you're thinking. God tested them. He put before the world good and evil. Hillary Clinton, the polar opposite of righteousness, a woman who supports partial birth. And then when they push her down on it and they pin her down she says no 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 hold it hold it no i don't really mean in that uh, i mean you got to understand look you're making a mistake and she talks a bunch of gobbledygook when the law says they can kill a baby as it's being born and these people are using that because they want to live forever you see and they think somehow they're going to discover something in these cells which they do they can take those cells from those the fetuses which are these cells are not identified they don't have a set uh, locked-in type. In other words, they don't turn into a this or a that. They can be changed. And they want to use those to rejuvenate themselves. You know, you could. They, they, there was a story one time I read in a magazine or watched a movie a long time ago. And the guy, uh, they gave him a retrovirus in it. And that retrovirus rewrites your DNA. That's what retroviruses do. They, they, they rewrite your DNA. And turn him into a child, or it was a girl. Turn him back into a child. Now, that's what they think. Hey, man, we could get this, inject ourselves, and we'll no longer age. We can live forever. Watch Elysium sometime. It's a movie. Got a lot of cussing in it, but it's the absolute truth. And the woman that's running it is a person like Hillary. You see? And Brother Brian and I, I had lots of discussions with Brian and with to Brother Todd. And the thing is, we were like, how could Hillary... If she's in there and the Russians are talking about attacking us and then that Branham prophecy will come true, how will that be? How could Donald win? There's a lot of speculation, you see, back and forth. But here's the deal, man. God was God was given a choice to the world. Hillary Clinton, this wicked, horrible person that said she was broke when she got out of the White House, her and her husband, we were financially ruined. And now she's worth $111 million. They say that she got $6.2 billion. They can't account for any of that money. Don't you, think the, you think the Illuminati and the, and the New World Order and those guys are going to let Donald Trump come in there, get rid of Obamacare, get rid of all those things that, that Obama signed with a stroke of a pen, and then he's going to turn around and start looking into those books, and all of a sudden you see $2 trillion that can't be accounted for. Or five trillion, however many it is. Do you think they're going to let him look into that and get away with it? There was a guy named John F. Kennedy, and I told you about this before. He he made a speech three days before they blew his head off, and they killed him because he was gonna he was gonna expose him. What do you think is going to happen to Donald? Huh? Why do you think they were sad in my dream? Why? This is what I think. I think judgment is coming upon this world, and I think the rapture is going to happen. And I think the Lord is coming, because God Almighty told me, He told me 40 years ago, that if I did this one thing that I was asking Him about, that He'd counseled me not to do, He said, if you do this, then this will surely happen to you. You see, God does not lie. <laughs> the very thing that God told me happened to me. And he said, and it will hurt you. And I believe somebody else over God. That's what happened to me. And that's why I'm in this position that I'm in right now. And that's why I'm living in a garage. Because I didn't listen to Almighty God. 
And thank God, I'm so thankful that, you know what, I was sitting in a truck five years ago smoking medical marijuana and drinking whiskey and telling dirty jokes and making fun of world situations. And you know what, God Almighty spoke to me that day in that truck and said, stop what you're doing, repent, I am coming soon. No man comes to God. No man can come to Christ unless the Father draws him. You think God is not in charge? He's in charge of this. And Donald Trump won for a reason. Because God has given them a clear choice, man. Because <laughs> these youth, you see, I had a dream and I saw. I saw these youth and they were destroyed. The most horrific thing that's ever been is, gonna, is about to come on this earth. Judgment is coming. And then God spoke this to me, Jeremiah 6. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Do you get that? Therefore, I am full of fury, uh, full of fury of the Lord. I am weary with withhold, withhold, withholding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband and the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. Do you get that? Jeremiah 6, 11, therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with withholding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husbandman, the husband and the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others, and their fields, and their wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophets, even unto the priests, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. You see, Obama and them have jacked around with God's country, and our United Nations and UNESCO have taken away the Temple Mount and the city of Jerusalem from the Jews, who had that as a heritage given to them by Almighty God. And you think Donald Trump is going to come in here and save this thing and make it prosper, like Kim Clement said. Kim Clement said, oh, great, prosper. And then what happened? He had a stroke. You think God doesn't know when you're going to have a stroke? You don't think God allows it? Because there's a guy named Job that had a hedge built about him. You know? And God removed it. I'm telling you some serious stuff here, man. People don't care. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. And at the time I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I'm telling you. God Almighty is returning, and there is judgment going to fall on this country. This is a wicked land, and the and the. Our government, those who are in charge of us, have dirtied and soiled this country. And you think that Donald Trump is going to come along and save it and bring salvation to it? I'm telling you, he's not. God made me a promise. <laughs> and he doesn't lie. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. 
and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not hearken therein. <laughs> they said, We will not look at the riots going on in this country and look at the pundits, look at the people on the news. Uh, there's these news anchors that are far leaning left and as soon as these people saw that donald trump won they bought, they wanted to commit suicide they were so sick to their stomachs they could hardly talk because they thought hillary was a shoe in you see it's it shamed the whole world because look donald trump won and they didn't want him to win and how could he win how's there a path for old donald and they unleashed upon him all the hell that they could and donald won but they're not going to let donald sit in that seat and turn the world back 25 or 30 years. Uh-uh. They're not. I'll be surprised if he even gets inaugurated. We'll see. Huh? And what will you say then? Look, I'm telling you, it's time to fall on your knees. It's time for you to pray for your children and for your grandchildren and for your pastors of your church <laughs> and for your neighbors because the thing that I saw that's coming people were pulling their hair out man and they were screaming and I didn't see anybody running in the same direction they ran out from a point like an explosion I'm telling you when they cry peace and safety says the Lord Destruction comes upon them. You think God is not angry? <laughs> you think it's a you think you can repent a little bit at the end and God's going to stay his wrath? I don't think so. How's he going to wind it all back and then try all this again, huh? Do you think and I don't care what those other guys say and all these other people that say they're prophesying in the name of the Lord. Hey, William Brandon was the greatest prophet that ever lived, they said. Maybe that's how it works. Maybe Obama sticks Hillary in there and she rules because he said, I don't know if she was president. I don't know what she was, but it was a woman. And then people want to go, well, maybe it was the Catholic Church. That's what it is. I don't think so. I think somehow Wigglesworth will get in there. Oh, Bill. Bill and those Bill and Hillary, they're going to get in there some way, somehow, maybe, huh? Maybe by hook or by crook. You know, they don't call him Swick, Slick Willie for nothing. Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says, will rise up in judgment against that generation. How many thousands of children does this country sacrifice to the God of sex and abortion every single day? And God doesn't see that. Oh, well, we're going to make a little change here. What do you think when Donald tries to roll back Roe v. Wade? The women are already in the streets with signs carrying against Donald Trump because they want to have the right. You see, it's our body. They don't consider that life. And then they can't get anybody to say, yeah, it is life as soon as it starts ticking. You know, as soon as they're conceived, that's life. But you know what? If I'm driving in a car and I run into somebody and she's pregnant and it kills her baby, they're going to charge, and I was negligent, they're going to charge me with two counts of homicide. But then that same woman can go right up to the moment of birth and kill that baby now. Get it out of there. I don't like it. It's my body, you know. <laughs> you see, these people think themselves greater than God Almighty himself. They dare to be equal with him. All right, I guess I'm off of my high horse now. But I'm telling you, this is the thing to look for when they cry peace and safety. When they say, hey, man, it's all, oh, look. The guns have gone silent. The war's over. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, my brothers and sisters and I. Though we may have disagreements, God, though we may have disputes, we ask that you'd heal those wounds, God, that you'd bring us together in a spirit of unity to pray as one against the enemy, God, the one true enemy that is out there, and that is Lucifer himself, the fallen one, and those he withdrew from your troop, God, the one-third. We pray, O oh God, that you would protect us against him 
and against them, against his wiles, God, because he is a roaring lion. Almighty God, we ask that you would put our feet upon the path, that you would forgive us, God, of our sins and our iniquities, God, because we are all sinners, saved but by the power of the grace and the atoning blood of Christ. Father God, we ask that you'd put our feet on that path. Help us, God. Force us to walk that path. We ask, God Almighty, that you'd protect us from the flesh, God. Our very flesh itself is trying to destroy us and destroy our relationship with you. So, God, protect us from this evil thing that we are living in, this prison. God Almighty, protect us and help us. We ask that you'd undertake for those that love you. We ask that you'd undertake for those in foreign lands, God who are under the rule of Islam. Almighty God, help these women and children and these men. God Almighty, send forth the Holy Spirit. Father, feed them in a miraculous way, Almighty God, in the name of your Son, Yeshua. Almighty God, bless all your people, God. Undertake for the bride. Help us to be spotless, God, before you in your sight. Cover us with the blood of the Lamb. God Almighty, help us to find a place to put our knees on the ground that we might pray unto you and seek you like we never have before. Because just as the calm is before the storm, this is going down now, God. The calm before the storm and a terrible thing is going to come upon this nation and it's going to be so grievous and shocking that no one will believe what has happened, God. That in, even if the very elect were faced with it, God. They could be fooled, but by the grace of God, they shall not be fooled. Father God, we ask that you'd move in the mighty name of your Son. God Almighty, it is only you who saves our relatives. It is you who calls all men unto you. God, help us in the mighty name of your Son. Bring peace and healing to our hearts, God. Fulfill your holy word. Your word says, if my people will humble themselves and they will repent and they will turn towards me, then I will heal their land and I will be their God and I will forgive their sins. God Almighty, help us in the mighty name of your Son, Yeshua. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God, I pray and ask it. Amen.